Hello guys, good day now for today's video lecture. We'll be discussing on cultural theories in globalization or rather on globalization. <laughs> uh, on globalization rather. So this is just a continuity of our lesson on uh, globalization and culture or rather cultural globalization. So when we talk about theory, theory is basically a body of knowledge. So it attempts to explain a certain phenomena and the phenomena would not be how culture is affecting globalization or the other way around how does globalization affect culture so we have to define first what is cultural globalization because this is one of the main theme in our discussion so it refers to the transmission of ideas meanings and values around the world in such a way as to extend and int intensify social relations so imagine that when we talk about culture which will be defining the it's a way of uh, way of life it's a way of living so the way you dress the way you speak your beliefs your food etc so from that community you will now create that certain cultural label now imagine that in a mark macro or in a larger perspective global yung ano natin no so imagine that how can culture be now one of the themes when it comes to globalization so we have to define first what is culture in order in order for us to understand culture and its impact or how does it uh, being affected by globalization? So basically, you have an idea about culture from your senior high, no, grade 11, UCSP, or from your other subjects as well. But basically, uh, just to review, what is culture? So defining culture, it refers to that complex city, to that complex whole, which includes knowledge, belief, arts, morals, laws, customs, and, and any other capabilities and habits acquired by man as a member of the society. So remember, man is a member of the society and how he express himself, that is now what we call now as culture. So culture serves as a foundation of man's continuing interaction with his surrounding. A while ago, I have expressed that man express, him, uh, express himself towards his fellow man. No? Dun sa discussion natin all about yung introduction discussion natin no so basically how does he express aside from communication or rather communication is part of culture so he express it himself so yung tawag natin dyan is culture people develop a culture of their own out of their learnings and experiences from their environment exposure so nakikita natin yung interaction no so man and man tapos nagkaroon na interact so man present himself, so that is culture, and how he develop his culture through his observation. No? So may pagka empirical siya, no? So what he observed, he will now gain, gain that uh, that the things that he observed at yun yung nagiging uh, molding ngayon ng, ng kultura na isang tao. So basically to understand what is culture, uh, ang daming reference no uh, or factors some would say distinctions characteristics of culture. Uh, may I just use Edward Taylor's element of culture kasi madali siya no. Although I'll be citing some uh, some characteristics as well no. So culture could be defined into morals. So when you talk about morals or rather more uh, basically means what is right or wrong. So nasa shape din yan ng culture no. Uh, for instance, knowledge, no? So, knowledge, yung education natin, just like dito sa Cordillera, di ba? We have your indigenous knowledge. Uh, for instance, uh, when it comes to land, when it comes to when someone dies, di ba? That is basically knowledge. And that would now reflect culture. Culture would also re refer to your beliefs. So, yung paniniwala natin, from a larger perspective or in an institutionalized perspective, we have religion, no? So, that is called the belief system. So the Muslims, diba, they believe in Allah and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. So basically, that would not reflect their culture. Or for instance, our uh, Christians, no, yung Christian denomination. Roman Catholics could be distinct, uh, could be distinguished according to their culture. Same, same as with your Iglesia Ni Cristo, your Jehovah's Witnesses, your Seventh-day Adventists. No? Customs, basically, yung mga practices natin, yung laws natin, reflected through your government, through your traditional laws. Uh, basically, hindi lang siya nakalimit sa political community, so government natin. We also have laws within our household, in, in our communities, that could also pertain to your culture. Then we have arts, no? something that is tangible. Uh, just to add, hindi siya kasali sa slide, uh, culture could be classified into two as well, wherein we have material culture. So, na-mention dito yung arts. Pwede din papasok dito yung food, yung housing natin, di ba? So, yung architecture natin. So, when you talk about architecture, madali natin madidistinguish yung bahay ng mga Filipinos from yung mga bahay ng mga Japanese. Basing kunyari sa roof at sa mga materials created from the uh, Muslim or rather Oriental or rather Middle Eastern architect, no? architecture. So, doon natin madidistinguish. Then, we also have 
non-material. So, talking about non-material, papasok dito yung knowledge, morals, languages. So, basically, yun yung ating culture. Now, please take note, no? So, in each communities, may mga ano yan, may mga cultures yan. So, from communities, even in your homes, may sariling kultura yan, no? So, sa dami ng mga kultura yan, so, pag nag interact yan, sort of nagkakaroon ng clash, nagkakaroon ng merge, and that is normal when we talk about in the society. Now, in a larger perspective, or rather, looking into a global perspective, ang dami ng kultura yan, no? And basically, ang nangyari dyan, nagkakaroon ng hierarchy, no? So, basically, uh, may isang homogeneous culture, tapos nagkakaroon ng specific cultures. And looking into a sociological point of view, di ba? Either that cultures coexist with one another, or nagko-conflict sila. Kaya some would now explain, in a sociological point of view, bakit yung mga kunyari, let us uh, recognize this problem, no? So, nagkakaroon ng discrimination against yung Muslims, nagkakaroon ng discrimination sa again, uh, against Cordillerans, mga Igorot, sa mga Ilocano, di ba? So, nagkakaroon ng conflict. Then, on the other hand, uh, there are some cultures, kunyari, from your Cordillerans and Ilocano could now agree upon or nag accept acceptan sila no so yun for instance local example lang yan now paano in a larger perspective diba so we have the united states culture american culture so na influence ng ibang culture sometimes nagkakaroon ng conflict diba lalo na ngayon diba american versus islamic culture quote and quote diba so nakikita natin yan so dito na papasok yung lesson natin all about cultural globalization that there are certain phenomena, actually these are theories that will now explain yung mga phenomena, bakit minsan nagkakaroon ng uh, conflict between cultures or rather bakit may something unique about this culture wherein we have cultural homogeneity, cultural heterogeneity, cultural differentialism, cultural hybridization, then we have terms such as the territorialization na explain ko na yan but just to review and with territorialization. Actually, there are a lot, no? But basically, ito lang yung na-mention natin. I'll just add another video kung mayroon man, no? Okay, to define first when we talk about cultural homogeneity. So, imagine in a larger perspective, but not just in a larger perspective, applicable din yan in a local scenario, no? So, when we define cultural homogeneity, it refers to the reduction in cultural diversity through the popularization and diffusion of a wide array of cultural symbols. Not only physical objects, but customs, ideas, and values. Simple ang ibig sabihin yan, from the term homogeneity, may isang nagdodominate nagdo -dominate, <laughs> nagdo na kultura. And basically, we could now see this one. Uh, Madami example dito na. And always, the best example would now be uh, the most powerful nation state in the world, which is now United States. Now, in uh, homo uh, rather in uh, ito? in political science or rather in social science in general, may term ito, may terminology tayong tinatawag na hegemony. So, itong hegemony, siya yung pinakamalakas na bansa. It has all the political uh, power, economic power, and social power. So, looking into sa social power kasi cultural tayo, uh, itong bansa na to would basically influence... Uh, it, it's either through assertion, force, or latently na, na influence niya talaga yung kultura niya sa iba't ibang bansa. And that is an example of cultural homogeneity. Now, the best example would now be United States. Sabihin na natin dito Philippines and United States. So, yung kultura ng Pilipino, sabihin na natin kunyari would now be clothing, di ba? Yung unang panahon, uh, not basically unang panahon. Our native clothing is made out of indigenous fabric, no? So, pinya, kaya we have your barong Tagalog. Or we have your weavings dito sa Cordillera, no? So, we are made out of, uh, saan nga ba gawin yung ano natin? Okay, so yun yung native attire natin, no? Clothing. In the United States, di ba? Uh, United States basically introduced yung clothing natin of polo shirts, di ba? And yung mga lakos or yung mga t-shirts natin, di ba? Uh, yan na may statement, no? So basically, through clothing as a culture, nagkakawin ng clash, at yung magdodominate dyan, or rather yung synthesis natin, would now be yung clothing culture ng United States. So, for instance, ang tawag natin dito is cultural imperialism. When we talk about imperialism, it has something to do with political science, but applicable naman din siya sa ibang uh, disciplines. No? Imperialism is basically nagdodominate yung isang political actor, or rather alisin natin yung term na political, yung isang actor towards another actor. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng di ba, mga activista natin, no? US imperialism alisin. Kasi ang nagdodominate daw sa political sphere daw dito sa Pilipinas would now be yung United States. That is in a conflict perspective or conflict theory perspective no so yun clothing for instance so nagdo-dominate no 
aside from clothing, kunyari yung sounds natin, no. Alam nga naman nakikita na uso nga ba yung yung traditional music no dito sa Pilipinas. Ang nagte-trending ngayon would not be for instance pop music, di ba? Yung mga R&B, hip hop, rock, yun yung nagdo-dominate sa sa panglasang music uh, music ng ating mga Pilipino, ating kababayan na Pilipino. So again, United States yan, no. Or for instance, education. So talking about education and knowledge as a uh, element of culture, di ba? So talking about knowledge Uh, more likely United States ang sinusundan ng karamihan ng bansa when it comes to education. Yan, yung structure, yung guidelines, K-12, even looking into our curriculum, English as one means of communication, di ba? Yan, so we could now check it as part of cultural homogeneity. Then also when it comes to politics, di ba? Laws, di ba? Philippines is uh, the constitution, our laws rather, is a contemplate. Uh, to the United States legal framework and structure ng ng government sa United States. So basically sinundan din natin 'yan sa Pilipi- sa Pilipinas. Or rather simply United States influence Philippines, 'di ba? When it comes to your uh, politics. So madaming example, medyo magulo example ko, pero I hope na gets you na no? So cultural homogeneity, may isang magdo-dominate. And example would now be cultural imperialism. Now, specific cases or examples of cultural homogenization, no. So there are two terminologies that we must understand or introduce no. So we have this phenomenon called McDonaldization. This has been introduced by Witzer, uh, one of the common uh, cases or rather study na na binabasa namin in the field of social sciences. Then we have Americanization. So going back to your homogeneity may nagdo-dominate. Or simply there's an actor, a state na mag-influence ng kanilang kultura pa maging homogeneous na no. So itong McDonaldization, when you try to check, uh, dalawang aspect yan eh. Uh, to those who are studying management, McDonaldization refers to uh, the principle of fast food restaurant no. So in enumerate dito ni Witzer, uh, he talks about efficiency, calculability, predictability and control are coming to dominate more and more sectors of of recent no. So ang konteksto dito is that more on the economy no pero when we talk about mcdonaldization more likely uh, this principle which is an american made will now dominate yung ating um, yung ating market no so more likely in every country na nakikita natin yung influence ng american when it comes to fast food no so that is mcdonaldization so when we talk about americanization very similar with mcdonaldization however mcdonaldization is quite specific ito americanization uh, it, it 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 does not just refer it <laughs> nabubulo lang hindi lang siya nagre-refer sa fast food no this is general in the sense basta american values customs and beliefs na assimilate when they talk about assimilation na pang na-influence sa iba't ibang bansa that is americanization from our education from our language from the way we speak from our clothing diba nagiging americanized na siya from our entertainment diba so yan netflix for instance So nakikita natin unti-unti nang nagiging homogeneous, nag-iisa ngayon yung mga kultura natin, nagiging general generalized, nagiging standardized na, na siya, nagiging universal na siya. So yan yung cultural homo- homo- homogenization. Now another terminology, it's the opposite. Uh, tendencies nagkakaroon talaga ng clash among cultures. Uh, technically hindi pwedeng maging isang ating kultura. So may nabubuong isang phenomena which is now called cultural heterogeneity. Also known as multicultural society, you already know from the term multi, region culture or rather cultures are widely disseminated and accepted by other societies and cultures and meanwhile enhance the cultural diversity in local societies. So the term there, please take note, where's my mouse? Cultural diversity, multi. So dumadami yung kultura natin. So there will not be clash. So in um, a dialectic point of view, when we talk about dialectic, so may isang thesis, may isang thesis, magka-clash yan, may nabubuong antithesis. And more likely, hindi mawawala itong mga, uh, itong mga thesis uh, when it comes to clash. May nabubuong pang isa, kaya nag- nagiging mass diverse. Because of globalization, cultures becoming more diverse, dumarami yung kultura natin. Now the best example would now be dito, no? Korean. No? Uh, so we have Korean traditional music. So then we have United States pop culture, uh, pop culture or pop music. So two dominant cultures, 
nagka-clash yan. When you talk about clash, it could be enc- nag-encounter lang naman, tapos nag-fuse siya at may nabubuong bagong kulto ba. So for instance, yan, would now be K-pop, yung mga BTS lovers dyan. I do not know about K-pop, but basically this is now a product and we call it now, or rather the process is called cultural hybridization. So when you talk about hybridization, nag-merge yung dal- dalawang kulto ba. Yan, no? so nabubuo na siya. No? Korean, we could now distinguish it is made from Korea. Aside from the languages, makikita din natin na infusion ng, ng kultura ng Korean. And basically, it's pop. So, United States yung bumo ng pop culture, pop music. So, yun nagiging K-pop, no? Yan, ba- basically, hybridization. We call it as hybridization. From the term breed, no? Hybrid, di ba? Or rather, breed, di ba? Yung dalawang breed. Yan. So, may nabubuo tayong bakong kultura. Uh, aside from music, could be languages, no? So, yung konyo speaking natin sa mga Pilipino, no? So, Taglish, pwede din yan. Or rather, to give you a more formal example. So, we have Filipino language, languages or dialects. So, kunyari, Bisayan, no? Then, we have yung Spanish languages natin, no? So, looking into our uh, vocabulary, di ba? Ang dami na infuse na American, uh, Spanish words, di ba? Or even Malaysian words, di ba? Yung mabahasa natin. But basically, to give you an example of cultural hybridization, so we have Filipino dialects, or Visayan to be exact, then we have the Spanish language. May nabubuo tayong bagong dialect, which is existing in Zamboanga. We have this dialect called uh, Chavacano. The only... Uh, Creole. When we talk about Creole, yung na uh, former na na colonize ng Spain, it's the only Creole language in Asia. So yun no. So ma uh, infusion of Spanish language, then yung native language. So that is basically Chavacano, Creole language. You know, so we talk about cultural heterogeneity. So this is cultural hybridization. Then we encounter as well another terminology when we talk about cultural heterogeneity. Dito naman, dito kasi nakikita natin infusion. So more likely pareho, equal yung treatment natin sa two original cultures or subcultures. Now dito sa term na globalization, ang nangyayari dito is we have one dominant culture, then another ay uh, pakita term na inferior culture. Sabi na natin one a uh, global culture versus one local culture na lang no so we have globalization plus localization or local culture may nabubuo tayo na globalization very similar with cultural hybridization however pag globalization yung distinction kasi dito is we have a macro level culture a global culture which will now infuse to a local culture at may nabubuo tayong bagong kultura global yan uh, best example dito would now be fast food no So, quite the opposite of McDonaldization. But we could also synchronize it with McDonaldization. No? So, kunyari, when we talk about American fast food, fried chicken na yan, no? And when we look into their meals, di ba, ang total meal, ang meals lang naman dyan pag Americano would now be burrito, or rather, listen natin yung burrito, simply burgers, chicken, then fries. That's it. Yun na, yun na mismo yung American meals natin. However, kung nag, kumukuha sila ng franchise or magsiset up sila ng franchise, through through local or from other countries from abroad uh, in a United States perspective and magtatayo sila diyan para pumatok yung kanilang restaurant they have to infuse local cultures no they have to adjust or adapt measurements um in favor of yung local communities mo dun, no so yun yung meal sa American no in order to satisfy Filipino customers They have to look into yung kultura when it comes to food. And our diet, our staple food would now be rice, di ba, pag Pilipino. So fried chicken, then you add rice. So a combo of fried chicken and rice. And that is only unique in Southeast Asian countries. Uh, hindi naman sa Pilipinas lang, no? Uh, Indonesian, ganun din, Malaysian also. Combination of fried chicken, then rice. But the rice, the tendency, pwedeng maiba yan. Uh, in, Yuna- in Indonesia, probably haluan nila ng gata. No? We do not know. Okay. Yan. In order to satisfy yung customers in that local community. Or for instance, diba? uh, McDonald's. So fried chicken, sabi na natin sa India, baka hinahalo nila ng curry. curry. So that is now globalization. Or sa Japan, hinahalo nila ng soy sauce or wasabi. Diba? <laughs> yun, no? So yun na nakita nyo. In order to suit, uh, suit in sa ating sa ating local communities no or for instance coke uh, the best example would now be coke kasi yung 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 mixture ng coke or ingredients ng coke from one country to another country um 
nagbabawi daw. Kunya sa India hinalo nila ng curry or mas mataas yung sugar or probably hinalo nila ng garlic. Well dito sa Pilipinas, Pilipinas matamis, di ba? Just like with your spaghetti. So it varies, no? Because again, uh, a dominant culture wanted to suit the preferences of local communities. Yeah. Aside from food, uh, pwede din dito would not be religion, no? So we have the Roman Catholic Church as a dominant culture, no? Uh, institution. So pagdating sa local communities, no? Dito sa Cordillera, di ba? Aside from language, no? Or when you talk about vernaculars. So when you talk about vernaculars, Bible, di ba? The Bible uh, dominant language would now be, or script would now be written in English kasi yun yung dominant. Or originally, it is written in Latin, Greek, or or other uh, European languages. No? So, pagdating dun sa local communities, they now have to translate it into Kankanay, into Ilocano. So, that is an example of localization. Or looking into Philippine history, diba? we, have, we now have your Philippine Independent Church. That is now an example of cultural heterogeneity. So, yan yung localization. Um, just to add, uh, another thing, uh, ito lang inad kung pwede, dami kong example, ba humaba na din yung oras ko, no? Now, when we look into localization and cultural hybridization, especially you millennials, millennials naman din ako, for instance, yung street clothing natin, no? So, we could now see localization and cultural hybridization. Now, ito is basically not, uh, when we talk about uh, clothing, no? So, my statement siya, it attempts to deliver certain messages, and we could now embed uh, interpret na may messages na gustong in-deliver ng ating mga t-shirts no, or clothing for instance uh, to bag you pips I know you are fond of such clothing such as Pine 74 so kunyari yung kagandahan kasi ng Pine 74 as an example nakikita natin ngayon yung yung theoretical phenomena on globalization and cultural hybridization kunyari globalization yan di ba ang clothing niyan is basically a feature of american uh, clothing culture, urban culture, diba? hip-hop, some would say it's hip-hop, diba? but basically hindi lang siya hip-hop eh, kasi it attracts urban culture, nandiyan din yung mga konyo natin, skaters, or even uh, simple persons, diba? and yun no, so yun no, so basically globalization, no? so we now have urban clothing, but embedded with that clothing is we have now local meanings, anyangay, diba? anyangay is a popular slur, a slur, or slang here in not a slur a slang in Baguio City diba nyangay it means what's up diba uh, what's up friend so yun nakikita natin no so they um in the bias it's not a bias in a point of view you're now promoting Baguio culture or Ilocano culture that is globalization and in the same time it embeds cultural hybridization how diba nakikita natin yan no the design is basically too ghetto too urban diba masado siyang uh for us style clothing a eh, high class clothing diba that uh, pag tingin mo pa lang parang wow um bang it's not basically imported but high class no na parang it's american influence but when you try to check into the elements of the clothing semiotic analysis diba yan nakita niyo indigenous diba probably a young uh cordillevan lady you could now see the tattoos and the clothing, yung patterns ng clothing natin. So it resembles now Cordillevan culture, a combination of your Cordillevan culture and your dominant culture. And globalization din yan. Pine 74, City of Pines. 74 is now um, your local telephone number. Ano yung 074, di ba? Yan, so nakikita natin yan. So that is an example or a product of cultural globalization. So yun no. Ah, uh, yun. Medyo mahaba na ba? Okay. So, I think this is the last. We have cultural differentialism. So, this is more likely a conflict theory point of view. Wherein cultures more likely will now clash with one another. Cultural differentialism basically involves barriers that prevent flows that serve to, sorry, to make a like. So, nangyari dito is nagkakaroon ng clash. Now, this is came, this came from Samuel Huntington's work on clash of civilization. He's a... He, he classified that there are eight cultures at yung tendency dyan is that kung nag-encounter yung dalawang yan, nagkakaroon ng clash. And this is basically explained through yung 9-11, yung 9-11 phenomena, no? So, na-encounter yung Western culture at yung Islamic culture. So, nagkakaroon ng clash. Or during your medieval age, di ba? Your Islamic culture. Your Islamic culture then Western, kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, the Crusades, di ba? When we talk about scenic, yung mga Chinese-Japanese, di ba? Uh, World War II din yan. yan. So, yan yung cultural differentialism. 
So thank you guys. I hope medyo may naget kahit magulo yung example ko no. So those are theories that would now define culture cultural globalization. So thank you guys. What's up?